DJ Crips football preview show. We got a coach, we got pizza, just like uh, usual. I actually got two coaches, but you can't see the other one over there. Um, but this is Stan Platt, Biggersville uh, head football coach. I'm Brad, that's Dalton. And uh, coming to you again on this Wednesday, as we have every week uh, during the football season, to preview some of the big games coming up. It's playoffs again. We've got the uh, third round for classes T3 and 4A, second round for 1, 5, and 6, or just North semifinals is what it is. And now normally what we do is we'll go to a high school and uh, and do the show from there. But uh, logistically speaking, this is the show. So we do still have some pizza. Pizza Doctor is the sponsor of this show, by the way. Check them out in uh, Gloucester Creek Village in Tupelo. And normally they would feed the team. But we couldn't go to Biggersville because, uh, the, like I said, logistics. I guess we could have brought the team here, Stan. That yeah, would have been nice. How many players you got? 30, 35? Right about 30. Yeah, we could have squeezed them all in, in, in the office. It would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, people could still get their work done. No, but uh, anyway, uh, just don't tell the players that they're not getting pizza. We apologize. Well, you kind of just did. Well, yeah. <laughs> John Luke can edit that out later. No, anyway, welcome in, Coach. Got a good game this week against uh, Knox the Pater. Uh, class 1A playoffs, and of course this is a team out of Division 2 1A, that division with Nanawaya and TCPS and Baldwin, I mean it's a very, very good division. Uh, but yours is pretty tough as well, and y'all had a good season, obviously, uh, So, and you got a chance, Coach, to make history. I mean, y'all have never been to the North Final, and y'all have made a lot of history the last uh, two or three years, so uh, how much do you talk about that with the players? Uh, I guess that could put a little pressure on them. Right. We don't really talk too much about that we talk about this one game at a time. And yeah. this is a great opportunity for our kids to um, play the second round of playoffs. They're just excited about that. But um, again, our goal, we made the second round last year. We want to play beyond Thanksgiving. It's always been our goal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, you've had a, had a really good season and some really good players. And of course, you know, you lose guys like Quan Mays and Quay Davis. And Quay, of course, was our two-way player of the year last year. Those guys are, Kind of impossible to replace, but uh, Goldman Butler, who got some carries last year, has really stepped into that lead back role. I had a story on him earlier this week in the journal, and and now he's the full time lead back. And just what have you seen from him that's making him so successful? His work uh, work work ethic has been very strong. I mean, he worked hard during the off season to get this opportunity to um, be our running back for us. Um, on the field, he's a leader. These kids follow him. He um, does everything we ask. From a coach and staff, he can do. He'll do anything we need him to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell you what, he has been a joy to see grow into this position, and he has done a fantastic job. He has taken the bull by the horn, so to speak, and taken. Game. We kind of talked about Katie Carter a minute ago, Knox Bears quarterback. Mm -hmm. How how tough is that to game plan, I guess, and defend a guy that when he steps on the field, it's the fastest guy on the field every game. Well, Dalton, one thing is we. Um, we don't have that kind of speed to simulate a practice, you right. know? And so when we're sitting there putting with the numbers of 25, 20 kids out there to 30 kids out there in practice, it is hard to us to find someone that can run like um, mm -hmm. the card kid. And um, so, because we got our best group out there on defense, so it's my second team running against them. And right. it's hard to find, I don't even have a coach that can run it. Pretty challenging right mm -hmm. there. He's, um, He's a he's a great little athlete, that's for sure, and I don't mean little by little. Mm -hmm. I mean he's he's a fantastic athlete, and he we're going to have to respect him a lot. And then they got another thousand yard rusher, uh, Raheem Hawthorne. So I mean it's not just like no, you don't stop one guy, the other one make make it. Hey, that's right, and uh, we're we're hopefully going to have a good game plan for both of them. But hey, they're a well coached team. Coach Ward's done a great job with them. Um, their line blocks fantastic. It's one of the better lines we have seen yeah. this year, yeah. and Probably one of the best coach teams full, and I'm um, looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, well, you got the game at home. Uh, Knox Pedro at Biggersville, 7 p.m. Friday, unless it gets moved. At this moment, as we're talking on Facebook Live, I mean, there's a forecast, pretty good chance of rain on Friday, and so we could see your game moved and probably could see some other games moved. So kind of have to talk to some people right. right, and figure that out. Well, yeah, we're waiting here. You know, of course, administration's got to talk to each other, and, and we're – Hoping to find out, but it's a hundred percent chance. What I'm understanding for rain tomorrow night in our area, so that's that's a pretty big yeah. chance. And I, you know, and yeah. I think I like to say, obviously, and that's oh, a sure concern. Yeah. But then we've had some games moved this year because of that very reason. So it would not surprise me to see it happen again. 
Uh, but those decisions will obviously have to be made today on Wednesday. Okay, uh, let's move on to the games to watch. Uh, we do four games to watch and then a game of the week, as y'all voted on on Twitter. But first, we have to go back and look at last week's predictions. <clears throat> you had a good week, Dalton, 4-1. and one. Oh, finally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I put you at 41-19 and 19 overall. Uh, <clears throat> but I went 5-0 and oh again. <laughs> so, <laughs> what game did I pick wrong? Uh, Baldwin TCS. Wow. Uh, yeah. I forgot. Pretty solid five-game lead on either Dalton. You do. I'm going opposite you every game this week. This is unusual for me. When it comes to picking games, I'm used, we used to do like picks to the whole sports staff, like college picks every week. I finished like last every oh, year. This has been a bad year for me. You know, the last two years I've won, I've done the college picking as well. The first year I won the regular season. The second year I won the bowl season. John Luke was in there with us last year. I just ran through everybody. And this year I'm like second to last place. I'm doing terrible in this. <laughs> Man, it's like me and my fantasy football team. Uh, okay, the first game to watch, Houston at Knoxby County. This is a rematch of Division Foes. Uh, Knoxby won when they met on October 4th, 19-12. It's a close game, Dalton, and this one's at Knoxby. And this is a tough one to pick. Houston's been banged up like crazy, and somehow they, they keep winning, Dalton. Mm-hmm. So I, it's, it's something about them. I don't know if they can pull it off this week. It's, mm, I don't know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say Houston pulls it off. I'm going to say they win 20-17. Uh, I'm going to go to Knoxby. Like I said, I'm going to go opposite you, but I also do believe Knoxby's going to win. They haven't allowed a single point in the playoffs yet, playing extremely well defensively. Yeah. And I think it's going to be 14-6. to six. Okay, 14-6. to six. Second game, Lafayette at West Point, another rematch of Division Foes. Now 28-24 back on September 7th. Uh, they were down at halftime, uh, but they uh, pulled it off because they're West Point, and that's what they do. So I'm not going to pick Stan, you, you don't pick against West Point. I've learned that the hard way. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't. So, West Point, I will say, wins this one 24-21. Uh, to 21. You don't pick against West Point. I am. <laughs> Ooh. I have to. I mean, I'm, pretty, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dalton's going but, on. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll kind of justify here. Lafayette was up, what, 28, 24-7 that game. Ended yeah. up losing, and I think Lafayette gets out to their big lead, holds on this time. Randy Anderson is playing fantastic. And Williams, the quarterback, got hurt for Lafayette, and that's when Randy had to step in. And ever since then, Lafayette and Randy have just been playing lights out. He's rushed. He's set a new career high rushing in three games since then, and just he's playing better, better each week. Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit look, a different looking offense that West Point's going to have to deal with. Uh, then you got the game just talking about Knox Pater at Bickersville as the Lions go for history, trying to reach the North Final for the first time. It's a tough pick, man. Um, I got to go with my gut, though. Apologies, Stan. I might have to go with Knox Pater. Uh, 27 to 22. <laughs> well, hey, I'm picking y'all off about. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm going to go 24 22 beers. Well, good game. I've seen I've seen both of them play in person, and they're both fantastic teams. Yeah, yeah that's a tough one, man. Then we got uh, South Panola at Oxford, big 6 day showdown. Uh, the Chargers have just been stellar on defense, Dalton. Mm-hmm. But as you've seen a couple of times, South Panola is really good on offense with Janari Dean and the quarterback, uh, Draper. Forget his first Ontario. name. Ontario. Ontario Draper. And uh, they beat Tupelo last week. And But, man, Oxford's, uh, Oxford's offense is not lights out, but they do just enough with John mm-hmm. Moore and J.J. McGee's and those guys. Mm, this one's at, at Oxford. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Chargers in this one. I'm going to say uh, I'm gonna say 20 to 18, Chargers. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go South Panola. I would have given South Panola anyway. No. But uh, <laughs> you know, Janari Dean is on another level right now. He ran for, what, 250? I think he broke off two runs last week, 80 and 90 yards. Um, the Ontario Draper kid just opened so many things up in that offense. And yeah. I'm not sure. I, I, Oxford can score, I know that, but I'm not sure if they can score at the same pace because you're not going to shut out South Panola. Probably not. Probably not. Just got to slow him down a little bit. Forgot to do my card toss. Uh, uh, I was just thinking, I, why are you holding the card? <laughs> I don't know. Now time for the game of the week is voted on by y'all. I'm just up the road for you. I'm familiar. Right. I don't play them, but, right. uh, but you're probably familiar with them. Very familiar. That wing tee. You ever run, against that, run, run up against the wing tee offense? Not recently. Yeah. <laughs> Games change a good bit. Right. And, um, but they run that wing tee fantastic. Coach Lowry does a great job with them. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, every time we talk about Corinth, we talk about the wing tee, because like, they're one of the only teams that runs it around here. So, three keys to the game. Key number one is, as always, trying to slow down that wing tee. Can't hit a Wamba do it. They've got a pretty good defense. Um, and Coach Clint Hoots, I'm sure we'll have them as ready as they can be, but uh, Tam Patterson and D.T. Sheffield and Caden Betts and all those guys, very hard to slow them down. Key number two, I will say the kicking game. you got Alex Williamson at Itawamba HS and John Ellis Murray at Corinth, both very good kickers. Uh, Williamson is 4-4 four of four on field goals this year. Murray is 5 of 6. And, of course, Williamson last week hit that clutch field goal to win the game with, like, a second to go. Mm-hmm. Freshman. Okay. 
and he hits that. So, uh, and this game could definitely come down to a field goal. I think it'll be very close. Uh, and key number three, and this is always the most important key, Coach. Which, which town, Fulton or Corinth, has a Jack's restaurant? Corinth, because every time I go there, I gotta eat at Jack's. Yeah, that's my favorite place to eat there. Edge, Corinth. <laughs> I like Jack's. They're making two, they're building two here, so. That's right, they are. I'm building so two on each side of town, which is kind of weird. So yeah. excited. That makes it easier for me, wherever mm -hmm. I'm at, and go to Jack's. Uh, okay, and that brings us to the prediction, Dalton. I'll let you go first. I don't know you're going to pick. I'm going to go to Wamba. Um, I think, I don't really have much to say about it. I think it'll Wamba is good. Um, let's go 14 to, let's go 24 to 21. Okay, so you got in Wamba. I'm going to take Corinth at home because they're really good on offense. Their defense is better this year, I think. So I will go with Corinth. I'll say uh, I'll say 28 to, to 14. Now, I think it'll be a close game until late. I think they get a late touchdown to kind of make it seem mm -hmm. a little bit uh, – uh, get some separation there, but yeah, that should be a heck of a game. That's the game you're going to, right? Correct. Right, and I'll be at South Vanilla Oxford. So, that is your game of the week, and we've concluded with the Brawlton Award. We do this every week, uh, the best one-two punch from the previous week. See Brad and Dalton Brawlton. Get it? I got it. No, okay. okay. There we go. Yeah. Uh, this week, it goes to Luke Altmeyer and Rufus Harvey of Starkville in a 35-2 to playoff win over Horn Lake last week. Altmeyer, the quarterback, maybe the best quarterback in, in the Northeast Mississippi, he was 20 of 31 for 272 yards and three touchdown passes. And Rufus Harvey, the wide receiver, one of the best receivers around, eight catches, 180 yards, and he had three touchdown catches. So they hooked up three times in that big win over Horn Lake, and they've got uh, all our friends this week. Mm -hmm. mm, be a good one, man. Be a good one. And that's it. That's all we got for this week's uh, DJ Preps Football Preview Show. Uh, be sure to check out our podcast, Prep Rally, every Wednesday. Find it in iTunes, any of your podcast apps or online at uh, prepperally.djournal.com. Check us out on Twitter at djournalpreps. Look for our coverage of all the, the high school football playoff action. Thank you to Stan Platt for uh, joining us here from Biggersville, and thank you to Pizza Doctor for sponsoring the show and for usually feeding the team. But it's not their fault this week, so it's just the way it worked out. So check out Pizza Doctor in Tupelo in Gloucester Creek Village. Stan, good luck this week. Appreciate it. And uh, it's a big game for y'all. Uh, again, possibly a historic game, so... Uh, this is what your third, fourth year as coach. This is my fourth year. Yeah, and you were out of coaching for a long time. Right, I was in administration for a long time. Obviously, did not lose your touch. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I got good people around me. All right, then we will definitely do one championship week to look at all those games. So we'll see y'all next time. Have a good one.